Hello everyone, I'm Jeremy Reeves, head blender of Cornell & Deal Pipe Tobacco Company, and uh, today for this edition of Cornell & Deal's Tobacco Selections, I want to talk to you about Dark Fired Kentucky. Uh, Dark Fired Kentucky is uh, often referred to as Burley, although uh, the growers of Dark Fired do not ever call it Burley. Um, they, they just call it Kentucky. It is uh, a very big leaf tobacco uh, and it has, even before the fire curing process, um, a really high nicotine level, um, moderate sugar, and a, a very, very spicy flavor. Um, after the fire curing process, which involves uh, smoldering hardwood fire that is kept constantly going for between 14 and 16 days, um, that, that smoke character from the smoldering hardwoods, uh, similar to you know, smoking bacon or, or a brisket or something, imbues all sorts of deep, woody, meaty sort of aromas and flavors into the tobacco, turns it dark, dark, dark brown, and, uh, and the end result is even more, uh, even more strong in its flavor, even more spicy. Um, a little bit of dark fired Kentucky in a blend can really go a long way, um, so it doesn't take very much to make its presence known. Um, it is a it is a great flavor. It is a flavor that is uh, very different than the other the other fire cured tobacco that we've talked about at this point. Latakia, Latakia is is smoked over softwoods, um, so it has more of a campfire kind of aroma, um, and and a little bit of a vinegar tone to to the aroma, and it has a very very pronouncedly sweet flavor. Well, Kentucky. Uh, by contrast, because of the, the hardwoods that are used to, to smoke it, um, and because of the, the base leaf being moderate in sugar, it has a little sweetness, but it is very, very deep, uh, very dense flavor, and it has more of a barbecue kind of aroma, and like I say, very spicy and meaty in its flavor. So let's smoke some, and... Uh, Talk about talk about how it actually tastes. Just smoking a, a straight bowl of it. It is a very very strong tobacco, nicotine wise. Um, this is this is first thing in the morning for me, and I can I can tell you just from first puffs, I can already kind of kind of tell that there is a lot of nicotine in what I'm smoking. There is a little sweetness to it, but it's very subdued. Uh, the main thrust of the flavor is uh, unsweetened cocoa. Um, and lots of bold spiciness, lots of uh, red pepper and black pepper going on. Um, kind of like Perique, smoking it straight is not as intense an experience as uh, as it can be using this tobacco in smaller quantities alongside other tobaccos. You, you get more of the, the uh, smoky flavor when it's actually toned down in a blend. Uh, smoking it straight, it's kind of like palate overload and, and there's a lot of complexity and a lot of flavor that is there that's just too dense to really pick through easily. But, But the main notes are that, that clear, smoky sort of flavor, and like I say, a lot of spiciness and just a very subdued sort of sweetness and kind of a dense roasted chocolate kind of, kind of flavor. Um, it's really wonderful with Virginia's. Uh, it dances really nicely with Oriental. Um, it, uh, it works well 
uh, alongside Latakia, the uh, the two the two very different smoky characteristics of those tobaccos can can kind of create a, a neat sort of melange of smoky flavors. Um, so an example of that uh, kind of a blend would be Afternoon Delight. Um, it's a lightly aromatic tobacco, um, and I do mean very very light in its in its aromatic. Uh, component, but a little Latakia and a little dark fired and, and they work together really nicely. Uh, bluegrass is a great example of, of a blend that has a very stout um, spicy note to it and, and in, that, in that instance we've paired uh, Virginia Perique Casturi, which is very, very spicy on its own, and dark fired uh, and I love that blend. Um, in Speakeasy, uh, we've actually taken uh, mostly Red Virginia and added just little trickles of Perique, Dark Fired, and Oriental. Um, so there's a blend where you can where you can see just how a really really small quantity of Dark Fired can actually still make its presence very clearly noted and, and come through really nicely. Uh, Dreams of Cadith has a little heavier hand of dark fired in it and is uh, paired alongside Caterini, which is a, a type of Oriental, um, and some Virginias and some Burleys, and that's all pressed into a plug. Um, I love that blend. Uh, Jackknife Plug probably has the most Kentucky used of any product that C&D makes, and that's from the GLP's uh, New World line of tobaccos. Uh, right around 20% of that blend is actually dark fired Kentucky, so a very, very stout hand of dark fired um, in that blend. Uh, a couple of other examples that I'm really fond of personally are Burley Flake Number no. 5 and Redburn. Um, and so there's some things for you to, for you to check out to see how dark fired. Uh, can be used in, in different blends and in different ways to evoke different uh, kinds of flavors. Lots of, lots of, uh, lots of dark fired versus little bits of dark fired um, can, can make a big difference in the way that uh, the whole blend smokes. Um, and as I say, a little bit with dark fired goes a long way. So I hope this has been educational. I hope that, uh, that you guys go out there and, and some of you will hopefully want to actually buy some, some straight dark fired to try and maybe use in some of your own blending. Um, but I definitely recommend uh, these blends that I've listed to you, some of my personal favorites that utilize dark.